All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Unlocking Greatness. Uh, I have been prefacing this episode for a while with many of you saying that I was looking forward to this discussion more than any of the 200 and some odd episodes I've had. Uh, when you hear, you're probably watching right now and you're seeing my guest and definitely every one of his accolades is to be admired and respected and looked up to. But there was something about watching him and hearing him speak recently that just blew me away. And I shared that with you guys. And so I am honored to have Pat Flynn with me today. Uh, if you have ever heard of Smart Passive Income, if you've ever heard of the book Super Fans, if you have ever been on YouTube searching Pokemon and <laughs> you, you've you seen Pat, you, you know who he is. Uh, he hosts multiple podcasts, the Smart Passive Income podcast, the Ask Pat podcast. He is just everywhere and everything. And uh, so I am honored to have him on and I want to welcome him. So Pat, Thank you so much for being here. Wow, what a setup. I mean, I, I feel like I have a lot to live up to you based on everything you said that you've told people already about me, but I'm here for the challenge as I always am, and I'm just really excited to uh, to share and spill and, and, and be a part of this community with you. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. And so uh, I shared with you offline. Uh, I want I want to give the the listener and the viewer just a, a quick context. I don't I don't want to take too long here. But uh, so I was recently in Vegas uh, at the Grow with Video Live conference uh, that was being promoted. I bought a platinum ticket because I wanted to the front row. I didn't care about. I wanted Q and A with the speakers, and I didn't want to ask questions. I just wanted to listen. I wanted dinners with the speakers so I could just listen and gain some more personal insight. And Pat was one of the speakers. And I, I mean, honestly, and ashamedly, I, I really didn't know who he was, at least by face. I'd heard of smart passive income a lot, but I just didn't know. And anyway, Pat took the stage and he just blew me away with his character, with his integrity, with his words. And so I went up to him at one of the platinum dinners and shook his hand and shared that exact thing with him, which was so humiliating to say. And Pat, you were so gracious in that moment. And so thank you. Uh, and yeah, just thank you for being you. And so that's you guys, how Pat got here. Maybe I guilted him into it a little bit, but. No, um, dude, no, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for all the kind words. And, and, you know, I'm actually really excited anytime anybody comes up and says, you know, I've hadn't heard of you before because it just reminds me that there are continuously more and more people that I could go out there to serve. And, you know, just yeah. hearing that from you and hearing what you're about, happy to connect. And here we are today. And I think this speaks highly to your character, getting out of your comfort zone to speak to somebody who might, might be able to help you and your people. And uh, yeah. oh. I think that's, re that's a really important lesson for sure. I could turn this into an hour of how to build super fans and I would be incredibly blessed, but, <laughs> but we're not going to do that. So what I, what I want to ask you really to start, and then we'll just see where this goes from here. So, sure. um, as I listened, as and I watched, as I watched you speak, and and you helped an entire room understand how to build community. This idea of the super fan, which is so profound, but in the midst of that, Pat, as you told stories and you continued to bring your wife into that story, she was so profound in the story that you shared with us. Why did why does that matter so much to you? Like, what is it about the idea of your wife? Because, you know, marriage is taken, unfortunately, so lightly in, in many places today. I don't think that husbands mm -hmm. have the affinity for or respect or love their wives the way that God calls us to. Uh, and so what is it for you? Like, what is that motivator? What is that trigger that causes you to feel that way? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a partnership. And I love to think about marriage as I do about business and it's a unit and together it creates something that can help the world in some way, shape or form. And the better that my wife and I work together, the better that we can prepare our kids. I have a son who's 14 and my daughter's 11. My son's going to high school next year, which is insane. <laughs> uh, and, and just kind of a wild time, even this summer as he's getting ready for band and band camp and all the things like our schedules are starting to get filled already, but we can even see notes of the way that we have parented together as a team Hmm. percolate into who they've become and who they're becoming. They're not perfect and they are still discovering who they are, but it is something that we've been able to help through example, guide them into. And that's, that's really, really profound. I think in terms of leading by example, I think a lot of parents say certain things and I know my parents who I love and who are still with, with us today, which is great. Uh, but they say certain things, but then they don't act that same way. Right. And there's a little hypocrisy in that. And that was the thing that my wife and I definitely wanted to make sure that 
we follow through on what we say and, and share why behind our certain decisions and all those kinds of things. But to me, it's like the family unit. We're, we're with our families more than anybody, uh, yeah. or at least my, my family and I. And so we want to make sure that those partnerships within our family are great so that we can be better citizens to our world, be better citizens in our community and have more fun and more happiness in our own lives as well. And I know the impact of that ripple effect that if you're happy, the other people around you are also mm -hmm. happy too. Uh, and then that kind of feeds into a positive feedback loop where if you're around people who are happy, they're going to make you happy. Right. And so yeah. there's so much negativity in the world. We try to start at the, at the home, uh, as much yeah. as possible. And, and that doesn't, do, doesn't just mean it's always unicorns and rainbows. It also means yeah. having the hard discussions when you need to have the hard discussions. It also means, um, solving those problems before they become problems that are unsolvable. Uh, mm -hmm. so this is really important to us as well. And, and, and when it comes to business, right, it's like, you know, I, I, sure on the surface, maybe the business looks good and on paper, it's making all this money. But if your team members aren't happy, eventually things are going to crumble. People are going to leave or people are going to be upset or not work as hard to uphold the values and the mission of the company. And in our family, we have missions and values just like businesses do. And so, you know, I think I'm, I'm very blessed that in 2009, I was laid off or excuse me, 2008, I was laid off because that kind of pushed me into the world of business and understanding how that worked. And then right around the same time I was getting married and was perfect because a lot of those lessons wow. learned as a business owner, I just, I, I, I just saw the parallels between that and, and, and my family. Um, so there's so a lot me, so perhaps let me, let, to unpack there. Let me ask there, something but. there. I think, yeah, I mean, man, I could have, I could have cut you off 15 times because I think there was so much good stuff and we'll I come talk back. A lot, I'm saying. <laughs> no, it's so good. I, this is about you talking, not me. They hear me talk all the time. <laughs> They're over it at this point. They're like, Ryan, get off the mic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shut up and let him just keep going. Um, okay. So you said that you were brought up, um, you know, in an environment where it wasn't always the best example. And it sounds like you, you know, you definitely care about your parents, but where then did you, where did you glean that from? And the reason why this is important, you guys, is because, you know, as I'm more interested selfishly about Pat's personal life and what makes him him, but from the stage to finishing super fans, which is, Pat, it, that is your most recent book, right? Super fans? Correct. Although okay, yeah. I'm soon to publish my next one. So maybe Ooh. by the time people listen to this in the future, future, like it might not be, but uh, okay. June 2025 okay. would be that. Oh, okay. So coming soon. Okay. So um, in, in, in the book, and this is where I think it's important for people to make this connection. And then I'm, I want to hear your answer is, you know, how we care about and treat people, which you're already talking about, tra it just, it permeates through everything that we do. And the better we treat people the more people are going to positively respond to who we are, to our mission, to our business. And so it was obvious that, you know, if I read, if I read super fans and I just put all those principles into practice, it's not going to do anything for me if I don't care about the audience I'm serving. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the context there for you guys to understand why I'm trying to, uh, you know, to, to, to extract this a little bit more. So now to the question. So if that wasn't necessarily the example you were given where, at, or maybe at some different points in your life, where did you start to pick up on either the principle that somebody taught you, or was it an inherent desire inside of you? Like, what was it, Pat, that, that started to shape your heart towards people in this way? Mm. I mean, if we had several hours to talk about it, I could go through every little detail, but I <laughs> remember specific moments in time looking back where I was taught a lot of these principles of connection and community and how powerful that can be of serving first. Um, when I was in high school, I was a part of the marching band and that was my safe haven because I was a little kid. I was very little, like, like physically little. I was not even five feet tall in my senior year of high school. So I got picked on quite a bit. And my only refuge was the other weirdos in the marching band who we each had our own uh, weird personality traits or weird physical traits that we were often bullied be because of that. But then it was the band that kind of brought those things together. So it just showed me the power of when people come together, we can share with each other. We have a safe space to connect and that makes us all stronger because the world's going to, is, is a nasty place and, uh, we can't always control what happens to us, but we can control how we react to that and who we come together with to help each other through those situations. And so the marching mm. band was really in high school, my first refuge, because that was something that I saw and looked forward to every single day. And despite the bullying, despite all the bad things happening in my life, it was okay, here's the place that I can go to feel safe and connect with other people. And that's where I met my best friends. That's where I started learning about relationships uh, and, and all those kinds of things as well. Um, 
to take that even further, I went to the University of California, Berkeley, uh, Cal, and I joined the band there. And that's when I started to learn about leadership. And so a couple things happened in the band there. Number one, uh, you know, the marching band in high school wasn't entirely made up of people who wanted to be there. A lot of people went into high school marching band because it was a PE credit. So it was like, I don't want to run track and do all this athletic <laughs> stuff. I want to be in the band to take care of this PE credit, right? Half of us wanted to be there and we loved it and it was okay. It was, it was fun. But when I got to college, everybody volunteered to be in that band. We all had a goal and a common history with music and we wanted to be there because we didn't have to be, but because we wanted to just be a part of this thing in the music program and be at football games and just enjoy life mm -hmm. together as musicians. And that was like a really, like I had never felt that sense of camaraderie in a group because we all wanted to be there. We all volunteer. We all had other extra, uh, you know, other things to do, like, you know, college stuff, real college stuff, uh, grades and career and all that stuff. But it was again, the band that we could all to come together and help each other out. And it was the seniors helping the freshmen, helping the sophomores, no matter what age or group or race or preference or any of that stuff. It was like, because we all had this common thing that we were going through, we could all connect and relate to one yeah. another, no matter what our backgrounds were. So, so the marching band in college taught me a lot about that, but it also taught me in I, in my elder grades uh, in college about leadership because I was a section leader of the trumpet section. Then I became a part of the musical activities committee. And then my senior year, I actually was uh, trying out to be, so my fourth year in college, I had tried out to be the student director, which is the person on the field who kind of waves their hands around and conducts the band. <laughs> and they also manage the, the band and where they go and all those kinds of things. And I lost by two votes. And it was wow. heartbreaking because I was set out for that goal my entire life was I want to be the student director of the Cal marching band. My high school marching director was from Cal and he just kind of ingrained in me, Cal, 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 everything. And so I was heartbroken. So mm. this is what taught me, if you really want something, find a way to do it. Because on paper, it was like, okay, you're a senior, you're graduating. Sorry, you lost your chance. But I said, you know what? I love this so much. I'm so dedicated to this group. And I have so much that I feel I can offer to it that I'm going to take one landscape architecture course my fifth year just so I could stay eligible to be in the band one more time. And I'm going to give this a go. And at the end of my senior year, when it was time to then elect another student director, I came in and I won by a landslide. And I was able to make a ton of changes that fifth year and really reshape a lot of that program to what it is now today uh, with the help of a lot of people. It wasn't just me, yeah. but I, I had a, this belief and I really wanted to go for it. Um, and so that taught me a lot of what then became a part of just my nature of serve first community, being a part of this group, going mm -hmm. above and beyond to try to make sure that if you have a belief in something, not selfishly because you want it, but because you know it can help a lot of people that you can find a way to make it happen and great things happen because of that. It was because of that fifth year in, in Marching Man, that fifth year that I built some relationships that then led me to my first architecture job because it was an architecture firm in the Bay Area where the architect had a relationship with a restaurant that he built and designed and the group that was the leadership in the band got invited to that restaurant. And again, like the whole butterfly oh effect, gosh. none of that would have happened if I didn't come from a place of just let me do what I can to best serve this brand, this band that I care so much about. And because of that, I got introduced to John McNulty, the principal at MBH architects. And then I got my first job and then, I, and then, I, and that led to me getting laid off in 2008. But if it wasn't for the job I had, I wouldn't have started my first business, which was about the lead exam, which is an architectural related exam, which launched me into my online career and it's like you don't know exactly what's going to happen in the future you don't know what path exactly you're going to go down i had a plan a and i definitely wasn't able to go down that route because of the great recession however by pouring into others you offer yourself the opportunity to be able to pivot and adjust more freely because of those connections because of who knows who you don't know what's going to happen but if you know more people you're more likely to make anything happen. And that's, again, kind of just a part of, of what I believe and what I try to help others believe too. So much. Um, it's interesting because 
so I, I don't want to talk too much about myself, but I wrote a book and I published September of last year called Wounds, How Hurt, Heartache, and Tragedy Become the Keys to Unlocking Greatness. And it's nine significant mm. moments of wounds in my life. The catalyzing event was I was a survivor of the Route 91 mass shooting in Vegas in 2017 and lost a friend that night. And, um, you know, people always ask, and there's a point to this, but like people always ask me, you know, you know, how can you ever say that anything good comes from that? And I'm like, look at, I would do everything in my power apart from sacrificing my wife and children's lives to go back and unwind uh, an entire event like that and save every mm -hmm. single one of the 58 people that was killed. And yet, because of going through that event, I'm a better person. I'm a better husband. I'm a better father. I'm a more intuitive coach, whatever. I'm a more passionate speaker. And I just heard you tell a story that started with you saying, and again, I'm, I'm paraphrasing and taking a little bit of liberty here, but like you got bullied into a space that completely transformed your life. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so incredibly profound for people that are listening right now, uh, whether they believe in God and attribute this to eventually God will work all things together for their good, or they have no belief at all, but they're struggling and they're suffering and they're like, why is this happening? And you are just, Pat, another perfect example of like, there's never a time in anybody's life when bullying is a good idea or we would mm -hmm. ever celebrate or condone. And yet, had that not happened, where would your life be? It's so interesting to think about it that way. And I, I have a mentor, Michael Hyatt who Ooh. has taught me a question that I always ask myself when things get rough or times get tough. And that is, what does this make possible? Mm. And it allows you to kind of reflect on, okay, Ooh. although things are terrible, there are opportunities if you think about them. And it's hard to think about them in the moment, but mm -hmm. to your point in my story, your story, everybody's story, if they want it to, it can be something where through that hurt through that tough time, great things can happen. Good opportunities can arise. I heard a quote once, I don't remember who this quote was from, but I thought it was so interesting. It's like, if an egg, if you take an egg, for example, and it breaks from the outside, you know, life ends, that egg is no longer able to do what it needs to do. However, if the egg is broken from the inside, from you, from the inside, life begins. Egg mm. still breaks, but it's not the external stuff it has to come from within in order for you to have new life. Uh, so I think that metaphor works really, really well for this kind of conversation. Yep. Yep. Um, kind of an aside here. So you said you have two kids and, and, and we'll get back to this train of thinking because I want to, I, I want to expand on this, but um, kids are awful, not your kids, hopefully, but kids are awful in junior high and high school. I mean, especially junior high, I just, I don't know what happens to kids, but they just become monsters. I mean, both of my daughters just experience so much struggle and challenge. Um, and so as a parent now, how do you help them navigate through their own experiences of mm. being talked bad about, being bullied. Um, like, how does that work for you? Because it would be one, well, no, how, how, do you, how do you navigate through that? Quite simply, we share that they are not alone first. Mm. Um, and we share our own personal stories, my wife and I both. We've learned that when we open up to them, they open up to us. Mm. And this is something that both of our parents kind of lacked toward us, my wife and I both. Our parents were very closed off. They never really shared their feelings. And so we open up quite a bit to our own kids about the struggles that we've had in our lives so that they can see, oh, this is not like, oh, it's a, it's a rite of passage to you know come to adulthood. <laughs> like that's one way to put it. Rather, everybody struggles, even we struggle. And look at how great we've ended up like we've got, we've yeah. we have these amazing things. We feel very blessed despite all of that and you will get through it, but it's something that many people, most people, us included have gone through as well. That combined with the power and the art of storytelling, right? It's one thing to say, yeah, son, I was bullied too. It sucks, but you know, you'll get through it. I promise. That's one way to go about it versus, okay, let me tell you about a story about when I was in band Imagine coming to band every day. Uh, this is in eighth grade when more monsters were there. Um, but, you know, 
being in the band and then being called a nerd everywhere you went because you had your band jacket on. I didn't want to wear my band jacket because I was, it was like a target for me. So I had this conflict of my, of my, in my mind of passion for music, but not really wanting to share it with anybody because I knew that I was going to be picked on because of it or be, being called a shrimp every single day, you know, and, uh, you know, getting very, very good with the, the way you tell stories. And again, I was just paraphrasing those, but you know, if you can tell a story better, the impact of what you share and the lessons that you're trying to teach will stick harder. I think every person needs to learn how to tell a story. Nobody tells us or teaches us how to tell a story. We kind of absorb that through the stories we read, the stories we watch. But even then, frameworks, the methods, like learn that, study that, watch with intention of how, why did that impact me so much? Why did I cry at the end of this movie? Why did this part of this story that I was reading make me so angry? Because then you can take those tactics and understand them and implore them into those who you're trying to teach lessons to as well. And so my wife and I both have gotten really good at like intentional intentionality behind how we teach our kids, not just what we teach our kids, but how. Um, mm. And that's something that I don't think I've ever heard really anybody talk about when it comes to parenting. Learn how to tell better stories that will make you a, be a better parent. Like that doesn't normally mm. go together, but it's absolutely true. And we've seen it as well. Not only that, it also enhances our children and their understanding of how powerful stories are so that when they are in front of uh, a class teaching or presenting something or when they're with their friends or when they're trying to make a case for something or when they get put in certain situations where the way they speak in public matters um, again just these things that i know aren't taught in school we're trying to kind of fill in those gaps at home yeah yeah man it's so good so you get to this place in your life. I mean, you said that your fifth year at Cal, you really, you really saw the fruit of you having a heart for people and you invest into this community and you just see this explosion of opportunity created there that I'm sure they're still benefiting from today. So you take that into the real world. Um, it hurts you again because you get laid off from, from, from the place that you feel passionate about. And so as you're experiencing these starts and stops, kind of getting shut down, pouring your heart farther into it, getting shut down, pouring your heart farther into it, where, where does the motivation lie? And, and you said earlier, you know, like if we really have this heart to serve, then we will serve and then good things will happen. But I feel like that is such a, and, and, and I'm not accusing you of anything, obviously, but like that is such an overused word. It's just like you see like, oh, you can't really see, but I, I talk about the phrase be authentic all the time. And authenticity is mm -hmm. incredible. What does that mean It's just exactly? so bastardized, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, like how, how do you, like, where, where's that drive continue? Like, why do you feel like, even though I keep hitting a wall, I, I just push through again. I hit another wall. I push through again because it, it just, it gets discouraging because people are discouraging at times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, two things. I've just built that habit. So it's just a part, it's okay. just become a part of my second nature. And it, that, that just comes with reps. You keep going. Uh, you, you have it just can, can, become a part of who you are versus like, looking for the result, right? The result is the hard thing. I think I, I, I remember, I think it was Dr. K on YouTube talking about this idea of we never really achieve anything. And when I heard that, I was like, what? Like I've achieved so much. What are you talking about? Like, what do you mean we don't have control over what we achieve? But, but his, his case was this idea that achievement is often based on these rules or parameters or goals that other people have set. If you do this, then this will happen. And if it doesn't happen, even though you did the things, if it, if because of some external or other factor, you don't get this achievement or accolade or, or recognition or whatever, you feel bad, even though you did the action. And so basing your, and this is, this, this, this was really impactful for me because I know that I am uh, an Enneagram three. Uh, so on the Enneagram sort of personality test kind of thing, an Enneagram three is somebody who thrives when they can see that they are making an impact on another person's life, when they get recognition for the work that they do. That's very much something that that drives me. And I think a part of this conversation is we need to discover what drives each and every individual, every one of us. 
uh, yep. ourselves and and even others because I know my wife, for example, she's not driven by that. She's more of a serve, uh, like behind the scenes kind of person. She she, she and the 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 love languages are, are are part of this conversation as well. It's like that that whole idea of knowing how another person responds and 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 why. Anyway, going back to what Doctor K says. Uh, this is a, a YouTuber, healthy gamer, GG, uh, who helps uh, mostly young, younger men who are addicted to things like video games and, and not so great things, help them get out of that uh, kind of hole that they're in. Um, he said that it's a very dangerous place for you to base your value, your worth on these achievements and accolades and other things that other, other people have said, because you could, two people could take the same action and However, if one, because they got the medal at the end and the other one didn't, it's like, well, then does that mean the other person is a failure? Uh, no, you base your worth on the actions that you took, regardless of whether or not it pans out or not. So for me, coming from an active service place, it's like because I'm doing the action of serving others and putting myself out there to help them. I know that I'm doing it right. And no matter what happens after that, I've done what I've needed to do. And sometimes I do things and it doesn't get recognized. Sometimes I do things and, you know, just nothing happens. I did the thing. I'm proud of myself for that. I'm just going to keep doing that. And the more reps that you get, the more it becomes a habit. And the more that you do it, the more it doesn't become as weird or uncomfortable for you. If you're more an introvert like I am, you go out there, you help people. And from time to time, you're going to see magic happens. And whether you uh, believe it's God, which I do believe in God, and I do believe that he has a master plan. I also believe that it's just karma and the way that the world works. Good things happen to great people. Not right away, not from the person you transact with, just some there's there's this universal uh, law of reciprocity that happens that just kind of comes back your way. And I think that if ever, like imagine if everybody adopted that sort of of mindset, the world would be such a better place. So you know what? I'm going to do my part in making that happen. I can't force other people to do it, but I can also lead by example and show how much good can come out of it. And that's what drives yeah. me as well. The example to my kids, the example to my audience, those kinds of things as well. Um, so that, that, that's what keeps me going. Um, not to mention I have, I, I like to gamify things in my life to motivate me. I'm very much a gamer and, and, and a person who's motivated by results and those kinds of things. So, you know, I play this game with myself where and it's not a perfect game, but whenever I go to my UPS inbox, which is every two weeks, I try to get more thank you letters from people like that's my barometer for am i making an impact in other people's lives so much so that a person would actually not just send me an email but send me a handwritten note and i get dozens of those every single uh month uh, every time i go into my ups box and it's like okay if i stop getting those i start asking myself am i impacting a person or am i being impactful to people in a way that would help them or encourage them to go out of the way to kind of respond back. And again, not saying if I don't get those, I'm not worth, I'm not worthy of it, but it's just a, 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 a game that I play yeah. to add another level of motivation for me to, to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Matt, it's so powerful. And, and at the same time, I think it is so stinking hard because those that lead with heart and truly desire to do what's right are often not repaid. Uh, they're not acknowledged or recognized. And, uh, and and if they are, sometimes it takes years. You know, I mean, we're talking about, and I know mm -hmm. that uh, you're, you're no overnight success in a lot of ways, but, you know, we're talking about your career took a massive turn in 2008. And then here we are today in 2024. And now you travel around the world and, and people know who you are and celebrate all the great work you've done. And you get those things. And there's this massive chasm in between in which people find themselves so discouraged, you know, in doing good and not feeling affirmed, rewarded, mm -hmm. Um, you know, in business, it's exceptionally difficult because we have, you know, we, we need to make money. Uh, and so I think it's great to be able to continue to, to go back and listen, you know, to somebody like you and, and share those stories that it's been a process, you know, it's not something that, you know, you started sure. doing a whole bunch of good for people and 
you know, the next day, you know, you were getting thank you letters in the, you know, in the mailbox or something like that. I just think it's yeah. such no, it's a not like hard that. journey. It is. And it takes some time. You know, we're telling the story within a contained 30 to 40 minute program versus, you yeah. know, the 16 years that I've been doing this. And it didn't happen at first. It wasn't easy. But time and time again, I've been able to understand what, what works better for that. I mean, and recently, and you spoke to this a little bit, I spoke uh, on stage at Growth Video Live about my new Pokemon YouTube channel. So in 2020, yeah. my kids and I, we were getting into Pokemon. I discovered this world on YouTube of Pokemon YouTubers and creators in this world of collecting Pokemon. I dove really hard into it with my kids. They outgrew it. I did not. I'm still doing it. And I've said, okay, you know, and a lot of people see the success of that channel. It's nearing a million subscribers now. We're almost 100,000 away from a million within three oh. years. It's been really fast. Uh, however, people go, wow, this is an overnight success. And I'm like, no, this is year. I started the channel in year 13 of my journey. Like it's taken 13 years for me to learn what works and what doesn't and the mistakes. And the thing that I'm leaning into most inside of this new space that I'm in, in the Pokemon space, is how can I speed up community building, making mm. people feel like that they're not just not seeing me, but that they can see each other. And so in my videos, you'll see me bring the community together and trade yeah. nights in person and what that's like. I am holding live events. Uh, we just held our live event card party, our second one in Orlando. We had 4,000 people come by uh, to join uh, forces and just nerd out on Pokemon together, you know, and you again, it's that same. You set a Guinness Book of World Records uh, record there, we right? We did. We did. Our second one, actually. We did uh, most people inserting a card into a binder within eight hours. We had 1,700 people do that. And so again, community, how can we make people feel like they're a part of something? We, cr we worked with the world Guinness, uh, records and developed this record that we could all together kind of be a part of so that everybody who goes home says, you know what? I'm a world record holder. Now we did this together. Like I could easily That's, do records okay. myself. I, yeah. That, okay. So that, that actually is something I think is so amazing, Pat, as like, so I've been following you ever since Grow With Video. I subscribe to the, you know, to the Pokemon ch channel. I have no interest in that other than the fact that I've been following along with the rapid rise in collectibles and, you know, Pokemon's been at the, uh, at the forefront of that in many ways, but I've mm -hmm. loved watching. And so when I saw that, I was like, this guy's a genius. And I know you're not doing it necessarily for the recognition, but you're getting the recognition because of the heart. But it's like, you just gave 1700 people an opportunity to set a Guinness world record. They would have likely never been able to do that on their own, but now they get exactly. to hang their hat for the rest of their lives on that. Like that is genius to me. And again, it wasn't like you strategized. I know this is all part of, you know, the business and everything, but it's like, it's not like you strategize, like, how can I use these people for my good? But you've done something so incredible for them that they will forever remember that not only did I set a world record, but Pat helped me do it. Like that's nuts to me. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fun. And I intentionally, when we get that, when we get that record, I'm on stage with a certificate. I say, we did it. This is yours. Very intentional words that are said and planned ahead of time because I know exactly how a person feels. This is about feeling inclusive, feeling like you are a part of something, feeling like despite anybody's background, we can come together and nerd out on these things because in this space or in the confines of this convention hall or hotel, we're together, we're, 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 we're friends and we can talk no matter who we, who we are, but on the outside, we're weird to people. So this is the place for all the weirdos to come together. And I'm just, I'm just the guide and the leader at the, at, you know, who's helping manage this stuff. It's not even about me. And on another level, you know, a lot of it is also recognizing the other creators. Um, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. just the MC, the other creators, especially the smaller creators. We have people with just hundreds of subs whose faces are on the website. This creator is coming to Card Party. Guess who talks about Card Party the most? Those people, not the ones with millions of subscribers, but the ones yeah. who don't often get recognized. This is all just people, people, human nature, wanting to feel like you're a part of something. The world being built in a way where we are often left out of things or feeling behind. Any one of us can create a space, not just online, but even in your local community. And you yeah. had mentioned earlier about how hard and, and, and long this process is. I think 
I don't want to push back on that, but I don't think it's as hard as we think it might be to bring no, people back. together and, and, and start something where people who have a common interest or a common problem or, 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 or want to achieve a common goal to have them come together. Somebody needs to step up to do that or else everybody's going to be disconnected, but you can be that conduit. And again, the idea of things coming back to you, if you create that safe space to facilitate these interactions and connections and magic happens by just n the nature of you being the one to put it together, even if it's not about you, it will come back to you because without even asking now these creators and everybody's going back home and saying, you got to come to card party next year. You got to go to card party. You know, we had pre-sold next year's event already to the people who were there the first year. We've already sold like over a thousand tickets. I mean, it's like, Whoa. It's it's incredible. And and again, it just speaks to this idea. And it's not about Pokemon. It's not. And, and even even on the Pokemon channel, my favorite comments are the ones where it's like, I don't even collect Pokemon, but these videos are some of my favorite to watch. And it's because inside of those videos, it's just storytelling, human nature, overcoming challenges, relatability. There are just common things in human nature that any of us can step up to say, Hey, me too. I do that as well. Or that's happened to me too. Let's work through it together. Cause you might be going through the same thing too. Um, you know, so whether it's band Pokemon doesn't matter. Uh, people need somebody to step up to lead and any one of us could be that leader. So good, man. You know, um, as I said, you know, I've been following along the Deep Pocket Monster channel on YouTube, and um, I've just been sucked in. Um, I <laughs> I cracked tears at Grow With Video when you shared the interaction with that little boy uh, that you were able to get a card to that, you know, um, that he needed. But I've watched over and over again. I've been so like when you when you shared the most recent video of you setting the world record, not even know if I saw it on YouTube or, or on your Instagram channel, but I was like, I was so happy. I'm like, yeah, like it was just so amazing. And what's so cool is like your face lights up the room that then lights up the room's faces. And so I just, I, it, it's so addicting. Uh, mm -hmm. And as I'm, you know, building community in my own spaces and trying to get way better at that, encouraging other people to do the same thing. It's awesome. The other thing that I think is so freaking amazing that I just can't get over is you have created the space that saved you decades ago. I mean, it's just, it, yep. it, it is profound for me to think about. And again, I believe this is fully a God thing, but when you had nobody, there were people there for you. And it was, you, you said earlier, you know, that it, it was all around this common goal. You wanted the same thing. You were on the same mission and you've lived your entire life that way. And now here you are, I mean, still far from the complete other side of it, but the other side of it, and you are now creating space. You call them, you know, the nerds or whatever. I don't think that I, I know what you're saying, but it's like, it's just people that, that, that need a space and, mm -hmm. and have common interests and goals and desires. And it's not the cards. It's, they want community. They want people. They want to be loved. They don't want to be judged. They want to be seen for just being human beings. And, and I just think it's amazing, Pat, that you have full circled the very thing that nearly drove you into the ground. Like I cannot get over that. And I pray to God that as people are listening, that that is one thing that like redemption is one of the most beautiful, I'm getting like choked up thinking about it. Redemption is one of the most beautiful things that God brings into this world. And you are mm -hmm. living that and you are giving that gift to so many people, which is why I think you are. And, and, and again, I, this is compressed into two months of following you. I think you are one of the most profound influencers and, and people in, in the world mm -hmm. today, in the ability that you have to create community and to do so in a way that people actually care about each other, even when they don't completely care about what it is they're, they're rallying around. So, I mean, like you are an incredible individual and I cannot encourage Thank people you. enough to read your books, to, to watch, like go subscribe. We'll have every link in the show notes, but like go subscribe to his Pokemon channel, especially if you have no idea what that even is. Like you will be floored when you see what Pat's able to do. So <laughs> I admire I that, man. That, Thank you so, so much. much. Um, okay, you I want to give you... me before we finish up, because I, I didn't want to leave people hanging who might be thinking about this, but when I 
was suffering in high school. Um, and I found the band that like, it wasn't just like, Oh, the band's here. I'm okay now. Like I had to muster up the courage to join this group, to learn how it worked, to understand the, the, this world that seemed to have really cool people in it. But I, I put in a lot of hard work and, it, and it's going to take hard work on anybody's end to go and be a part of that group because it's a very scary thing. Like you don't just go into these groups and like, you know, everything's great. Uh, you find the people within those groups that welcome you. There are like, even in the Pokemon space, right? It's like a lot of people who come to the event are scared to come to the event because they've never gone to these things before. It takes a lot of courage mm. to do that, but you're going to have to have courage in order to get encouragement from others and find yourself in a space where you can find your people. So I think I just wanted to hopefully just encourage all of you out there who might be like, I'm lost. Or I haven't found my people yet. Like, that's okay. But you got to keep trying and you got to keep putting yourself out there. And I promise you, like, eventually you'll cross paths with somebody who will change your life. And then I want to encourage you to, as you go through this transformation that you might be having in your, your own life, just like I have, it's a part of a ripple right? Somebody came before me who helped me and somebody came before them who helped them and all, all this kind of stuff. And it's up to you as to whether or not you want to keep those ripples going and helping more people, or if you want to be just like that brick wall where the ripples stop and then the energy just dissipates, right? So I want to be a part of the ripple continuing. And I, and, and I encourage all of you to understand kind of that that's your place too, um, in your own way, in your own style, with your own, with your own personality behind it. Um, yeah. So th thank you for giving me a lot of uh incredible time here on your platform to share and you know i'm just grateful for the for the time and hopefully one day i can hear from one of your listeners and say pat it was that episode with ryan that really changed uh changed my life that happens from time to time and it's like my favorite thing in the world so um i appreciate you again thank you oh i appreciate you too i hope so i thank you so so much that's the perfect way to land the plane i don't need to say anything else if you want to connect with pat all of his contact information will be in the show notes. I cannot encourage you enough to do that. I implore you to do that. Thank you guys so much for your support, for listening, for everything that you are and everything that you do. When I say go unlock greatness, go be the men and women that God has created you to be. There is nothing greater than that. So thank you guys so much. Thanks, Pat. Talk to you guys soon. Thank you.